Okay, so now we're going to get ready to put the doohickey in, the torsion spring hole in, and then put everything back together. We're not going to talk about scraping gaskets because that's pretty basic, but I will talk a little bit about that. So there's a couple of tools here. This is actually my favorite. I've worked on this edge with a stone. It's not sharp, sharp, but it's sharp enough to get gasket material off, and it's safe enough that I don't gouge. Another tool that works pretty good if your gasket's not super stuck are these plastic gasket scrapers. They're safe, they won't gouge the case. Now a lot of guys will use a razor blade tool or something like that, it's up to you. Just don't gouge the case, okay? So leaks, when you put everything back together, are usually caused by, if you tried to take all the gasket material off and you left a chunk somewhere, that's going to make a leak when you put the new gasket on it. Now this gasket is actually good enough if you were cheap and in a hurry. You, I would put a coat, a thin coat, so thin you could see through it, of Permatex number no. 2 all the way around this. And then use it like that. And we can see on the back side of this case, you see where it chunked right here? Don't scrape those off. If you were going to leave the gasket in place, leave it this will fill the gap voids right here now this one is actually chunked enough if it was my bike and I was going to ride it I'd scrape the gasket off scrape this clean put it back together another thing you see these two dowel pins right here they need to be there and I'm actually going to put them in here because I like those to be on the side where the gasket is so this one's not coming out so we'll uh, it's going to make it fun. I like them both to be on the same side, but we'll talk about that in a minute. So the next thing we're going to do is drill the hole for the torsion spring. Now this casting was used from about 19 style, this shape right here, was used from 1985 actually until 2010, I believe. And I'm going to drill the hole for the torsion spring right here and you'll see that in just a second and I'm going to set it on a piece of wood and you don't have to indicate it or anything like that it's not super super critical you can eyeball it if you want you can put a center punch mark I've done about a million of them so I'm just going to drill it and the drill people ask about what size drill it's a 16th inch and it's always in it's in the kit with the torsion spring so I'm going to I'll show you the the drill location in just a second. Now this drill bit's bent a little bit, doesn't matter. It's okay to have a little bit of um, oversize in the hole. Normally I'd fire up the compressor and blow the chips off, but we'll, this is just for demonstration, so we'll just get it kind of clean and go from there. Okay. And you drill all the way through, and you can actually see where the spring was hitting at some point right here. That's, a lot of times there's marks right here from the spring vibrating against the case. Now let's take a look at, this is the later model case. This is where Kawasaki changed the case design. You can see right here, and I've already drilled the hole in this. And you can see that somebody has run this with the lever loose, so that's why it was running back and forth like that. So these marks, when you see this in your case, you, it means somebody was running with the bolt loose, and that's not supposed to happen, okay? And it's supposed to be fixed. This adjuster is supposed to be fixed while the engines run. So at this point, we're gonna put this back on. And what I do is I like to start with this because this sticks out the most and it's the biggest hole. And then I'll put it on this and then I'll put it in this hole. And once in a while, depending on temperature of everything, this is a little bit tough to get on. If that happens, you can push out and then in to spread the case just a little bit. This is going on nice and easy today. Okay, so that's there. And then for the sake of speed, I'm just gonna whiz these guys in here and I'm not gonna tighten them a lot with the, uh, 
driver. And I don't know if a lot of people may or might not know this. This is my favorite tool. It's a Bosch 12 volt, super handy. They make an adjustable clutch version. Usually I use that when I'm doing this for real. And then I finish them with the torque wrench. Um, this is reversible, batteries, you know, typical. Um, it's just a really great tool, fits your hand real nice, and these are super reliable. We use them all the time in the shop. And no, I don't get any money from Bosch for saying that. Okay, so all of those are in place. So the next thing we do, we put our torsion spring in there. And this is the proper bend. It's bent like that on purpose. And this wants to be straight or in just a little bit towards the center. And so now we put it in the hole. Sometimes I have to use pliers to help me get it in there. Today we got lucky. And now we put the doohickey on the shaft. Now, one thing, sometimes people will put it on like this, and then they say, oh, it doesn't line up. Well, rotate it clockwise as far as you can, then put the doohickey on there, and you're good to go. Now, the, another thing that tells you that this has minimal wear on it is usually, and I'm, I'm preloading pre this with my finger to take the slack out. Usually, a worn system, this will be about halfway across the slot. This is only about maybe 30% across the slot. And I'm not gonna preload it a lot. It doesn't need a lot. This needs to be a little bit. And I'm just gonna put this bolt in there to hold it in place while I hook the spring into place. Okay. So now a lot of guys fight this, and what we want to think about doing is pull this around to here and hook it into the slot. Now some people say, well wait a minute, there's aluminum behind there. Well the end of this spring is short on purpose, so it just hooks into the end of the slot and it's going to pull the doohickey clockwise. And I'm going to use a pair of pliers to grab it. Don't use dikes. I've seen a few guys use dikes. Don't do that. Don't grab it any tighter than you need to. Okay? So, I'm going to grab it about like that. And I'm going to pull it out and around and down to the left. And get it in the slot. Hopefully in a second here. There we go. That one wasn't the smoothest one I ever did, but it worked. So then you saw me push this back in there, and that's how it's supposed to sit, just like that. As long as nothing hits the starter gear, that's okay. And some people say, well, wait a minute, if I pull on the doohickey with a, with a screwdriver, I can pull it out. Well, yeah, but your engine's not gonna be doing that, okay? So it, it stays in there. And like I say, Wattman's had one for 175,000, so it works. Next thing we do, Make sure our washers are in here. These are these keep the spacing between the big starter gear and the chain and sprocket back here. You don't want those to hit. Okay. Now we'll put our key in place. Now a lot of times what I will tell people to do is center punch the key. If this is your first time, center punch the key, and then you have to tap it in here. And that's a good thing because especially if your slot is down here. That way as you put the rotor on and you're, if you fight it the first time, the key won't fall out because that center punch raises material out, okay? But the important part, or you could rotate the, just rotate the engine around until it's like this. And let's make sure this is clean and dry. Same thing in here. You don't have to degrease it. 
actually helps if there's oil on this and a little I can see a little bit of oil now let's also talk about this real quick this is a one-way clutch and um, it's not going to slide take the key out the way this works see these rollers are going to grab onto this hub and that's how your starter drives the engine see that doesn't just slide in there but if you rotate it it goes in because that lets these rollers expand out and get and roll up over the edge like that and see why I can't turn it the other way that's how your starter works in one way so I'll put this back on and explain that again. And I'm going to get new towel. And I forgot to put my washer in there. Let's get our washer in there. You'll see this doesn't stick up a lot. And you want to be absolutely sure this is in the key, keyway, the key is in the keyway. And what I do, see I'm holding this with my two hands and then I'm gonna reach over here with this finger and turn this and rotate this back and forth just a little bit because I know about where the key is, right? And there we go. So you push in and wiggle this just a little bit. And you'll also see that there's a little gap down here between the end of the crank and the threads, that's on purpose. Some guys worry about that, but that's the way it's supposed to be. Okay, and you can, another reason you wanna have a good puller, you can see there's only about three threads in there. And there's a, this is a, a press fit taper, so it's really on there sometimes. And sometimes guys strip this, or they use a crummy puller, and sometimes they're so stuck the regular puller can't get it off. Anyway, so this is all in, in good shape now. This is ready to go. And what we would do, we would normally replace the rotor bolt. Not gonna do it this time because we're gonna take this engine back apart for other reasons. The reason we replace the rotor bolt is it gets a bolt load of torque for a 12 millimeter bolt. For the Gen 1 engines, it gets 130 foot pounds. For the Gen 2 engines, they changed the spec, did not change the bolt, to 144 foot pounds. And you want to be sure as you go that this still turns. If it doesn't turn, you're going to have to back the torque off and only go as high as you can for this to still turn. It's important. So the way this works is, see, your starter drives these two gears, which drives this gear, and it turns it this way because that's the way the engine starts. And you can see I can't turn the starter gear that way without turning the engine too. But if I, I can turn it this way, and so that's how it freewheels. When the engine's running, this stays still, and this spins like this, because this is all engaged with the starter. Okay, so we've got, okay, to, to do this properly, we do a two-stage torque. We use our rotor holder wrench again. And we'll go to 85 foot-pounds the first time. that's turning. Now if that's not turning, you stop right away, take everything apart because it means that the key's not in the slot in the rotor. If it's not and you crush that key, you're going to have to play dentist and dig that key out, like mess the engine like a root canal, get the key out, replace it, and start all over again. Always easier if you do it right the first time. Now, another quick note on torque wrenches. Um, don't use the bottom 10% or top 10%. I get a call from guys all the time saying they used a Harbor Freight torque wrench 
that stops at 150 foot-pounds and they went to 144. Well, guess what? You probably over torqued it. And I would not guess, I would not use an impact wrench to tighten these. It's always best to do it right. When you do it right, it works every time. When you do it wrong, you're taking a risk. And it's, you know, just replacing the engine, it's not worth it. Borrow or rent a torque wrench, it's the right, right range. So we're going to 135. I forgot to break it loose in between. Okay. So a lot of, I did make sure that this spun free the first time, but um, one thing you can do after the, for 85 foot pound torque is break the, break the bolt loose and then go to 135 or 130 or, or 144, okay? So this, this works. And there's supposed to be just a little bit of in and out play if there isn't any, and you can only feel it while you're turning it, um, and it's only about, at the most, a sixteenth of an inch, that has to be there. If it's not, if this doesn't turn when the engine fires, it's going to drive this, which is going to drive this, and it's going to back drive the starter. It's going to ruin the starter. You'll hear it right away. Stop. Take everything apart. Don't, don't run it again until this is spinning like that, like it's supposed to. Okay? So now... The next thing that goes in normally will be this. This will engage with the starter, and the big side goes to the back. And that engages with the starter teeth right there, okay? Then, easy way to do this, and I'm about all about easy, put this pin in. Put our two, gear, our two uh, bearings on there and put this on there. And guess, hey, we got lucky. Now sometimes this won't go in there and it's because it's hitting on this big starter gear. So just turn the starter gear a little bit and then everything lines up and goes in. Then put your washer. So be sure you got your washer inside and out on both of these. If you get an extra washer in there, oops, thank you, Bob. Yep. And a lot of times when people take these apart, they, they miss one of the washers and sometimes it gets stick, stuck to the magnet here and sometimes it gets lost in here behind the stator or you know other places. But the most common place is in here or in there. Um, so we got this in there. 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 Okay. So I'm looking around, let's see, we gotta have our two dowel pins. We got dowel pin here, we got a dowel pin here. Looking at our parts, we only got our old doohickey and stuff. So we're ready to put the outer case on, I believe. So what I do to make life easier, again, I'm all about making life easy. We'll loosen this doohickey bolt half a turn. just enough to let it wiggle. And the reason is we're lining up a dowel pin here, a dowel pin here, these two dowel pins, and um, this the O-ring in this bolt fits this bore pretty tight right here. So with all that lining up, if you let this wiggle a little bit, the case will start a lot easier. And we'll talk about the deep hole issue in the 2008s and early 2009s in a separate video. But that normally right now would be when we would address that right there. Okay, so we got all our parts in. We'll undo this, set this down, and then I let my fingers overhang the edges because the magnet in here is going to pull on the stator. And I want to control that. And so I'm going to... Sounds good. So we're, we're filming. <laughs> so uh, now we'll put in our 10 bolts here. Oops, gotta have a socket.
And for this application, it's just a cavity. You don't have to do cross torquing or anything like that. You can if you want. to torque the inner case bolts normally I would 70 inch pounds okay and don't forget the small one that's back behind the gear now I would torque all of these 70 inch pounds use a quarter inch torque wrench don't try to back off a half inch please don't you know, again don't use a bottom or top 10% of a torque wrench this is a real nice one I get these from McMaster car they're made by the same company that makes snap-on Similar quality, they're about a third the price. They work really great, they're CDI torque. Okay, so we torque all these and torque the doohickey bolt under this rubber plug. And I'll show you how much torque that is. It's not a lot because I get guys always, not always, guys calling me saying, hey, I broke, broke the bolt. I use 70 foot pounds like it says in the instructions. Well, 70 foot-pounds is not the same as 70 inch-pounds. It's 12 times more. So, we want to use 70 inch-pounds or 69 inch-pounds. And this is how much it takes. You can do it with one finger. Okay? If you've never used a torque wrench before, practice on stuff that doesn't matter. So you can see how easy that is. Um, so we be sure to get your doohickey bolt, same amount. The thing should not be running with that doohickey bolt loose. It's wrong. It'll break the spring right away and screw up a bunch of other stuff. Okay. So let's see. Let's put our rubber plug back on there. Let's put our wires back in there the ignition and neutral wire goes in first and get it on the outside with the aluminum protrusions on the case there we go and then you can put this in there let's see there we go and then when you put your counter shaft cover on there, you can be sure that all the wires are protected. And so that would be the next thing I would do is put our counter shaft cover on there. Oops. Put these three bolts in there. And they get the same torque as these. Sometimes people tighten them more, but it's only plastic. It's only a guard. That's fine. Don't forget to put oil in it. Um, oil is a whole different subject. You can figure that out. Um, put your shift lever back on and there's a little dingleberry on the case right here. And if you want the stock angle, get it as close as you can to that little dingleberry, okay? Put your, put your um, skid plate back on, put oil in it, and you should be done. So, if you got any questions, you know my phone number is on the instructions. I appreciate your business and support. And I want to give a shout out to Thumper Bob, who's doing the filming. And he helped me out a lot in the shop, uh, especially when I was dealing with cancer. And I want to give a big shout out to all you guys that helped me out uh, with my hospital bills. I really appreciate that. I never expected that. It, it was just wonderful. So thank you. I appreciate you.